In this video, we'll talk about interfaces. Now, before we start with inter interface, let's talk about the abstract class. Now, let's say I create an abstract class here. So we'll say abstract class A. And in this class, let me create some methods. Now, we all know in the abstract class, we can create our abstract methods and normal methods as well. But let's say if I have abstract class, which only has, let's say, abstract methods. If I say public abstract void show and we have public abstract void config. Now, when you have abstract class with two abstract methods, of course, this works. There is no compulsion to have non-abstract methods here or we call them as concrete methods. There is no need for them. Now, whenever you have a situation where you have an abstract class which only has abstract methods, we have another way of doing it. Now, see, all this are decided at design time. So when you make an application at designing, you specify things, okay? Uh, what are the classes I need and what are the abstract class we need? So you create this hierarchy of system. Of course, we'll talk about that hierarchy in some time. Why do we need it? But at this point, we create a hierarchy. And when you have a class which only has abstract methods, the other alternative for that is to create an interface. So instead of creating an abstract class, we can create an interface. Uh, most of the time we use this interface in project development. Uh, so let's understand that. So we have the interface A. Now you will say what is changing there. Now, first of all, interface is not a class. Okay, so that's why that's the main difference between abstract class and interface. And by default, every method in the interface is public abstract. So these two keywords actually not required because anyway, they are public abstract. So even if you don't mention, they are by default public abstract. And that's why if you can see, when I put a semicolon just after the method, there is no error because behind the scene, public abstract is there. Now this is your interface. So interface basically means it's like a class, just that all the methods are by default public abstract. Okay, but then how will I use this? How will I instantiate this? The same problem was there with abstract class, right? We cannot instantiate it. Now, if you look at this, how do I instantiate? Let's try. So I will say A, OBJ. See, there's no problem in creating a reference of it. So that also means we are creating a type. The way you create classes. So let's say if A is a class, you can say A, OBJ. So A is a type, right? In the same way, here, the interface A is a type. Okay, this works. But the moment you try to create object for this, it will give you an error. It says, if you see the error, it says, cannot instantiate the type A because it's interface. You can't in instantiate it. Okay, the, what's the solution? The solution is, see, first of all, why do we get interface? We create interface so that we can design something. We can say, example, let's say if you ask me about how do we create a table, I can say, or maybe if you ask me how to reach somewhere. So I can say, go straight, take a ride, go straight, take a ride, take an auto, uh, take a bus, get down at the next stop. So what I'm doing is I'm giving you the path, right? I'm giving you design. You have to literally take a walk. I will not walk for you. I will just show the directions. In the same way, interface says, I will tell you what are the methods you need, but I will not implement them. It is your job to implement. So when I say your now, I'm talking about classes. See, ultimately, you create object of a class. Interface just show you the design. So here what I can do is I can create a class. Let's say class B. So we have a class B here. And then in this class, I want to implement these two methods. Now, in terms of abstract class, we say extends, right? Because class extends another class. Here, A is the interface. We have to use a different keyword here. The keyword which we use is implements. So whenever you want to implement the interface, you say implements keyword. And when you say implements, it becomes compulsory for you to define both the methods, okay? If you fail to define both the methods, by default, your class also becomes abstract, okay? But we don't want to create abstract class, right? We want to create a concrete class. We want to create object of B. In that case, it's your job to define both the methods. Okay, there's one way you can use a shortcut here. You can just go back here and say quick fix. It will ask you to implement the methods or you can do the hard work. You can say public void show uh, and then you can define something here. I can say I'm defining in show and then we can define another method as well, which is config or public void config. And here we can define in config. So basically what you're doing is you are implementing both the methods. As I mentioned before, if you fail to implement this methods or this class becomes an abstract class, but we are implementing it, right? Now, when you implement, basically you can't create object of A, 
but you can create object of B and you can see it works. And now using this OBJ, I can call show, I can call uh, what other method we have? We have config. So we can call both the methods and that perfectly works. If I compile and run this code, you can see it says in show in config. Okay, what, what else? Can I have, uh, so the way you create variables here, or so the way you create methods here, can I create variables? Now, first of all, we don't uh, define variables, right? We declare them. So we can actually. So if I say int, let's say age, that's a variable. I know, I don't know why I'm taking this age variable every time. But let's say we have int age here, and let's say we have string area. So that's an area name. But you can see we got an error. That means can I, I cannot create variables? That's weird. I just said I, we can, right? See, the only thing is, every variable in the interface, we can create actually those, those variables. The only thing is, they are by default final and static. So all the variables inside the interface are by default final and static. Okay, uh, so that means we have to first initialize the variable. So when you say it's, it's final, we have to initialize the variable, right? Okay, that's not my age, but let's say 44. And let's say area is Mumbai. Okay, so basically what we're defining is we are defining the age, which is 44, and the area is Mumbai. Now, these variables are final and static. Now, first of all, since they are static, which means we can directly use the interface name. Remember, when we use static variable, we don't have to use the object. Uh, example, if I want to print the value of name or area here, I can simply say a dot, a is the interface, a dot area. I can directly use it, not with the object. And if I compile and run, it works. You can see we got Mumbai. If I try to change the value of this, if I say a dot area is equal to, let's say if I want to change the area to Hyderabad, uh, it's not working. You can say it says, the final field, that's right, the area is final. It is static, we are using directly the interface name, and it's also final. Okay, so that's one thing you have to remember. Now you might be thinking why it has to be static final. See, first of all, you don't instantiate the interface, right? Whatever you instantiate is a class, and you're not doing extent, you're doing implements. What you get in implements is only the methods, right? Uh, you don't get the variables there in implements. So that's why it is static because we, do, we want to use the interface name. And final, because interface objects or inst interface don't have their own memory in the heap, right? What you create object of is of B, not, not of A. So if you don't have your own memory, how can you have a non-final variable? So this is interface. Now in the next video, let's try to understand why do we need interface and why do we even need abstract class? Okay, let's talk about those things in the next video.